from Hollywood, the Hollywood Radio Theater. Starring Joan Fontaine and Joseph Cotton in September Affair. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Irving Cummings. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. A thought that has intrigued many people from time to time is the possibility of starting life anew, under another name, and in a different environment. In tonight's play, September Affair, we will tell you the love story of two people who met under circumstances that gave them this chance for a new life with their newly discovered love for each other. And as our stars of this very human drama which Hal Wallace turned into one of his beautiful productions for Paramount, we have the original fine artists, Joan Fontaine and Joseph Cotton. Tonight's play has the romantic background of Naples, Capri, and Florence. Now, September Affair, starring Joan Fontaine as Marlena Stewart and Joseph Cotton as David Lawrence. <laughs> Italy, the seaport of Naples. A moment ago at the airport, the plane from Rome made an unscheduled landing for repairs. Among the passengers are two Americans, strangers, save for this chance meeting on the plane. Well, I don't, I don't suppose they have any idea how long we'll be delayed here. Oh, I'm sure we'll make connections all right. You're in a hurry to get back to New York, aren't you? Well, I suppose I am. Well, in a way, I'm glad we had to land. I've never been in Naples before. And the Italians say, see Naples and die. I've never seen it either. There wasn't time. There never is. Attenzione. Attenzione. Partenza per Lisbona in 20 minuti. 20 minuti. Oh, she says we'll be leaving in 20 minutes. Italian minutes. They have to change the fuel pump and replace a gasket. Well, how can you tell? I'm an engineer. It would take American mechanics at least two hours. Well, then, then there's time, isn't there? D to see Naples, I mean. Oh, what are we waiting for? Oh, my name is Lawrence, David Lawrence. I'm Nina Stewart. How do you do? Miss Stewart, would you care to share a ne Neapolitan taxi with me if there is such a thing? And, uh, well, uh... uh... I'd like to very much. Oh, thank you. Well, I'll say this much. Lunch on a terrace is a decided improvement over lunch on the plane, even if the music is only from a phonograph. Oh, yes. And ravioli con salsa and Chianti and Vesuvius all in the middle of the day. It makes me feel very special. Well, the count has disappeared. Uh, a signora, uh, una otra bottiglia Chianti. <laughs> si, signor, si. Your Italian's improving. Two months in Italy and I've learned two words. Two hours with you, and I'm a linguist. I should have met you sooner. Ecco il vino. Che sapore? Provi questo. This is Caruso Specialita. I remember, signor, when I was a young girl, Caruso once here. Buono, eh? Excellente. Americano. Me? Oh, no, no. Me, Italiano. <laughs> what are you? Oh, uh, me, Chinese. <laughs> Who's fun and wife, huh? No, no, we are brothers. <laughs> oh, Capito. <laughs> you stay here. I give you a nicer room, good food, and you take a nice excursion to Capri. Oh, Capri is bellissima. Oh, it sounds wonderful, but unfortunately we have to go back to America in exactly 42 minutes. Oh, to be so near Capri and not to see it. It's so cruel. Touristy, always in a hurry. Why you come here if you're always in a hurry? I uh, came to Florence to visit a friend. Die to put some distance between me and myself. Oh, now I know where I saw you before yesterday in the travel office in Rome. And you, you were engrossed in a letter? Yes, from my wife. You'd like to see this? It's a book. Full of phonograph records. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, An American soldier delivered them to me. He never come back, poveretto. Ah, oh, la guerra, la guerra. Oh, Look at this one, all alone by the telephone. I used to dance to that. And oh, Oklahoma and uh, Lily Marlene. Oh, and here's one of my favorites. Well, let's play it here. I'll put it on. Oh, I haven't heard it in years. What is it? Well, put the needle down. You'll see. It's very nice. 
beautiful. The days grow short when you reach September. And the autumn weather turns the leaves to foam. One hasn't got time for the waiting game. For the days dwindled on. <laughs> of course, you're much too young to appreciate the words. Well, I hope so. Now, let me listen. You uh, see that speck up there in the sky? Mm-hmm. That's our plane. Oh, oh no. I'm afraid we missed it by about ten minutes. Well... Apologize to the Italian mechanics. I certainly will, and I'm, I'm very sorry. Well, as much my fault as yours. And besides, Naples was worth it. Oh, I could cable them to hold the plane at Madrid and charter another to get us there. Well, if they would hold it. Hmm? Oh. Well, I know it must be terribly expensive chartering a plane, but I... No, 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 that isn't that. I was, uh, I was just thinking, don't misunderstand me now. What I'm going to say is not very conventional. But I was just thinking about Capri. It would be wonderful if we could spend a few days there. I, I, I mean, the way we've spent the last two hours. Oh, would be nice, and frankly, I'd love to. But I'm going to America for a concert, and, well, it's terribly important to me. Of course. Uh, singer? Pianist. Famous? Ever heard my name before? No. <laughs> well, there's your answer. The concert's a month away, and I'm scared of it, and... Oh, the world's in an awful mess, and I may never get back here. Let's be unconventional. Let's be unconventional. Now, where'd that taxi go? Come in. Good morning, Signore. I've been waiting for you. And I thought I was going to surprise you. I... I... I have a feeling I look ridiculous in these clothes. There's a shop just across my hotel, but it seems nobody in Capri sells anything but sports clothes. Uh-huh. You look just like the man I'd love to have breakfast with. Well, I've made a few arrangements. After breakfast, we get in a rowboat, and a guide's going to row us all around the island. Wonderful. The grotto's too, I hope. It works. Come along. There's a little cafe on the water, and the boatman swears they have to serve the most wonderful... Che bello! Ma la cosa più bella è l'ecco della grotta. Vuol provare? What's he saying? <laughs> well, it seems as respectable tourists, we should try the famous echo of the grotto. So think of something original. Oh, that's easy. Menina! Oh, by the way, that's an Italian name. You're an American. Menina! Shut up! <laughs> My real name is Marianne. Shut up! Oh, he doesn't mean you. <laughs> Well, a long time ago, when I was a little girl, I couldn't pronounce Marianne, so I called myself Menina. And I've been Menina ever since. And I'm David because my father was David, my grandfather was David, my great-grandfather was David. And your son, in case you have a son, is David, too. Uh, yes. Dovete andare a visitare la Grotta Azzurra. Mio fratello vi farà da guida. Now what's he saying? Well, it seems as respectable tourista, we must also see the blue go- grotto because he's a brother there who's a guy. Well, let's not disappoint his relatives. <laughs> well, pensiamo che avete molto ragione. A ci piace vedere no. la grotta azzurra. Now, what do you... Oh, è un panorama che voi non potete mai dimenticare. È di un zio che è dagli assidi uh, what... che vi condurrà la torre di Tiberi. What are you talking about? <laughs> he has an uncle with donkeys. Oh, well, good. And after the Blue Grotto, the uncle with the donkeys will take us up to the cliffs to the Tower of Tiberius. Oh, this is going to be quite a day. But, David, you you would like to go, wouldn't you? Of course I would. I wouldn't miss it for the world. (sighs) What a lovely day. (laughs) Thank you so much. It's the best time I've had in years. That sounds a little sad. What have you been doing? Oh, it's a long story. It's late. You just as soon that I say good night. Oh, oh, do me one favor, will you? Mm-hmm. 
Well, the next time I order spaghetti floating in butter, take the plate and pour it over my head. <laughs> what if you insist? Yes. No excuse for me puffing like an old locomotive just from climbing a flight of stairs. And from now on, it's going to be less food and more exercise. Starting in the morning with a swim before breakfast? Good. Well, I, I'd better... Uh... David, wait. That long story. What I've been doing? Mm -hmm. Well... Briefly, I've been making money. It took me 16 years to build up my factory until it runs itself and raises a son whom I hardly ever see. I kept busy all my life, and then, then one day I woke up and began to wonder, what's it all for? Where do I come in? And then you decided to take a trip alone. That's about it. Good night, David. Good night. You haven't said a thing for 15 minutes. Oh, sorry. Uh, like to take another swim? No. Well, then we'll talk. What do you want me to say? Oh, something stupid. Something to bore me. Why? Well, we've been here for two days, and you haven't said a word or done anything I didn't like. Oh, you should see me at the Bayshore Country Club. I can be an awful bore in the proper surroundings. You live in Bayshore? No, but we spend our summers there. It's nothing like this. If we had any sense at all, we'd, we'd leave Capri and go straight back to Naples. I'm going to Naples, David, tonight. Do you mean I've succeeded in doing the wrong thing? It's no use. I can't go on pretending. Pretending? That after today or tomorrow or in another week, two friends will say goodbye, nice to have met you, and go their our separate ways. Menina. I can't stay, David. Why not? I'm falling in love with you. I never wanted to hear anything so much in my life. It, it isn't our fault that we met. But it would be our fault if we stayed together. I don't want just a few stolen hours and you're not when, free. When I left for Europe, we had decided on a divorce. Well, then, let's make it right. If and when you're free, we can start all over again. Menina, that day in the travel office, that letter I was reading mm -hmm. was from Catherine. She said she knows now that she can't give me the divorce. She'd agreed only to because... Well, she was too proud to refuse. She says we have too many things in common to break apart that she's thinking of our son. She loves you, too. I wonder. Just, and just loving someone isn't enough. We never made each other happy. Isn't that important? I, I can't think like that. She's your wife, and I'm not. What time does the steamer leave for Naples? Ten o'clock. May I go back with you? I'll be leaving Naples on the first plane I can get. Back to New York. Yes. Yes, of course. And as soon as we're through breakfast, I'm to check back with the airline's office. They think there'll be two seats on tomorrow's plane. We'll be in New York Tuesday. Yes. You know many people there? A few. Well, what's the news in the paper? Drink your coffee and I'll give you a complete report. Now, let's see. Atchison made a speech in Washington, Bevan in London. What did they say? I've no idea, but Russia says no. Hmm. There's been a hurricane in the Philippines, a plane lost in the Mediterranean. Thirty-two passengers and a crew... Oh. David, look, it's our plane. The one we missed. It, it's what? Listen, all hope abandoned after days of searching. List of those missing on page three. Here, here, Look. Your name, David Lawrence, New York. And here you are. Oh, don't they check the passenger list? It must have happened between here and Madrid before they noticed our absence. We'll have to send word immediately. Yes, of course. Well, let's get out of here. We'll go over to the post office and get these cable calls. All finished? Yes, I just had two to send. One to my agent and one to Maria. Maria? Maria uh, Salvatini. She's my music teacher in Florence. I have no family, and, well, the others will find out soon enough. Well, let's get them off. We'll have to take them over to... Menina, wait. No, David, no. Don't say it. You, you thought of it, too. But it's impossible. Why? To the world, we're dead. Out of millions of people, we're the only ones who have this chance. Would we be happy? It would be so terribly cruel to the others. No, they've given us up. It's a miracle that we're here. 
And we were only alive because we wanted to be together. David, I'm frightened. Not so much for myself, but for what I'd be giving up. Wouldn't be very important, but you... They need you. I told you what that letter said. She'll never give me a divorce. We'd live like strangers for the rest of our lives. You have a son. Oh, he doesn't need me. He's ready for college now, and then he'll take my place at the plant. He'll have a fine life. I was younger when I lost my father. Perhaps they don't need you then, but are you sure you won't need them? I only want you. All right, I'm selfish. This time I'm thinking of myself. You know you're wrong. I only know that fate is offering us a new life, a wonderful, happy life. The only question we must answer is do we love each other? If you have the slightest doubt about that, then sign my name to this cablegram and send it. I'll wait for you outside. David, wait. Yes? Nina. Nina. We'll continue with this week's production of the Hollywood Radio Theater in just a moment. Make a friend and you make an ally. There's a thought for you to keep in mind, as many another American has. In 1945, Lyle Hayden was sent to Iran by a privately financed organization to help the farmers with their agricultural problems. At first, they were listless and disinterested. But Hayden started a small demonstration farm to show them what could be done. He began to drill for the water he was sure lay beneath the villages. And when he hit it, his second-hand pump began pumping 15,000 gallons an hour. Well, now the Iranians welcomed his help. With their aid, he purified the water, removed the threat of malaria from the irrigation ditches, started a successful chicken breeding program. Then he opened a free school to teach the children reading and writing. And it was so successful that the Iranian minister of education asked him to organize his teaching methods in other villages. Hayden offered a teaching job to any young villager who, who could learn to read and write. The successful ones came from his night school classes. As the months and years went by, Hayden continued educational and agricultural programs throughout the country. And today, what prosperity the peasant farmers of Iran enjoy can be attributed to the tireless work of Lyle Hayden who combined the best qualities of missionary and businessman to win the thanks of a grateful people. Once again, an unselfish American proved that by helping others, you help your country. Now our producer, Mr. Cummings. Act Two of September Affair, starring Joan Fontaine as Manina Stewart and Joseph Cotton as David Lawrence. <laughs> It's several days later, and to all who knew them, Manina Stewart and David Lawrence died in a plane crash somewhere over the Mediterranean. Now in New York, David's wife has a visitor, a family lawyer. I wouldn't have bothered you, Catherine, but something's come up that I don't understand. It's all right, Charles. I'm glad you're here. I, uh, I hope you won't mind a personal question. Tell me, was your marriage happy? For a long time it was. Why? Well, do you know anyone by the name of Maria Salvatini? Did uh, David ever mention her? Why, no. No, not that I can remember. Well, as you know, David had a special account set aside at the bank for charity. A check for a very large sum has been drawn against it. Payable to this woman. Well, when was the check dated? The day before the accident. Uh, you have the right to stop payment, you know. It's David's money. He earned it. Let it go through. You asked if our marriage was happy. No, it wasn't, Charles. David changed in the past few years. Everything that was was home to me had become a prison to him. He wanted a divorce? Yes. But in my last letter to him, I told him that I... that I just couldn't. My marriage was my life. Oh, maybe I've been terribly selfish, but I... I was so afraid of losing him. But he was on his way back to you. Yes, but for what? To try again, Charles... Or to insist on the divorce. Now I'll, I'll never know. That woman's name, Salvatini? Maria Salvatini. She lives in Florence. If you want me to find out more about her... I'll... No. No. Not now, anyway. I... 
I have a lot of time, Charles. Mr. Lawrence? Yes? So, so you are David. I am Maria Salvitini. Signora, I'm so very happy to meet you at last. You have decided to settle down here in Florence, eh? Huh? And this, this is your Shangri-La. Yes, how do you like it? I left my carriage at the gate. That was a mistake. I did not realize you had taken over an estate. Well, we were hoping you'd like it as much as we do. It's very beautiful. Now, where is Manina? Still in the house, moving furniture around. May I go in? You want to see her alone, don't you? With your permission. Well, she'll be delighted. This way. Well, you weren't supposed to be here until tomorrow. Everything's still in an awful mess. Being a woman and unpredictable, I came today. So you giving up your concert. Years of work tossed overboard. David and I are tossing everything overboard. And you call this a life? To me, it's a suicide pact. You didn't say that when I phoned you. Oh, I was so happy to know you were alive. I, I can think. Now I can. It won't work, Manina. What you're doing is selfish, cowardly. It's wrong. There's a poor foundation for happiness. Cowardly because we have the courage to start again? Or selfish because we don't want to hurt anyone? Or wrong because we're happy? And how long will it last? As long as we love each other. And have you for a friend. You've seen David? I met him on the drive. He has a charm, I suppose. Even though I don't approve of him. And so kind and thoughtful. Thoughtful, ha! Huh? Manina, I don't care what you do. As long as you're not fooling yourself. Dare I come in, or should I walk around the grounds again? Oh, please come in. Maybe she'll stop scolding me. <laughs> it's all right, Mr. Lawrence. I've said enough for the moment. Uh, by the way, the bank called me this morning that the check you sent to me went through. Oh, good. Now you can start your brave new life. Well provided for by the old one. But what if someone in New York wonders why you make me such an unusually generous gift? What then? No, my wife would never question that. No? She sounds like a splendid woman. Even so, what about your papers, your passport? Oh, passports are good for a couple of years yet. And the servants solve the name question. They insist on calling him Signor Lorenzo. And if Signor Lorenzo runs into an old friend who knows him? Oh, very simple. I grow a beard on the spot. Oh, I give up. I knew this visit would be useless, but at least I got it off my chest. You wouldn't be my old Maria if it hadn't. Well, you'll make me work if I stay, so I'd better go. I'll phone you tomorrow, and just as soon as this place is in some sort of order... Yes, I'll... yes, of course. Goodbye. Now I'll see you to the gate. If I found my way in without the compass, I can certainly find my way out. Goodbye, Mr. Lawrence. Goodbye, Senor. Manina, has, has she been upsetting you? Of course not. She's the best friend I have. Look, we're starting a new life, but it won't work unless we're absolutely honest. We mustn't lie ever, even even for the sake of not hurting each other. Promise? I promise, David. I love you so. Have you been standing there? I really don't know. I was rather impressed with the music. And your eyeglasses. Oh, dear. My last secret is out. Only when I read no, or no, practice. No, no, no. Keep them on now. Come back on. Huh. Well? If I were you, I think I'd give up reading and music. A man with a porcelain cap on his front tooth is in no position to demand perfection. Well, that takes care of me. Here. Here. How would you like to read the news instead of just guessing at it? Oh, the New York Times. Only two days old. September the 5th. September the 5th, well. Tempest certainly does future. What does September the 5th mean to you? Remove your glasses. What? Because I'd like very much to kiss you. As long as you continue to shower me with presents, everything will be all right. You remind me of a Shetland pony my father bought for me once. Was he clever? Handsome? With a porcelain cap? Hmm. It was my very first recollection of 
complete happiness. <laughs> Any other recollections? Oh, lots. But one that happened right here in Florence, oddly enough. I'd won a scholarship to the Royal Conservatory, and Marie and I went to a wonderful little restaurant to celebrate. Oh, you think you could find it again? I'm sure I could. Then let's go. We'll walk. Or, or will we? Oh, let's. I'll show you the entire city of Florence. The beautiful city of Firenze, named for the flowers. The guides won't like you. But after all, they're not as pretty as you are. <laughs> and I'll show you the statue by Michelangelo. He's called Avid, like all great men. Well, was I right about this restaurant? Perfect, just like Greenwich Village. Oh, no. <sighs> David... What happened on the 5th of September? It's, it, it's my son's birthday. Oh, well, let's have a drink to him. This wine reminds me of that little cafe in Naples. I wish they had that old phonograph here. That's where we really discovered each other, isn't it? Mm -hmm. September song. Play it for me, Menina. There's a piano over there. In front of all these people? Oh, come on. You've played for large audience in this. Well, you come with me. <laughs> Uh, please, don't stop. I don't mean to horn in, sir, but hearing that song, well, I, I knew you were American. Are oh, you lonesome, Corporal? Yeah, I guess I am. I'm stationed in Trieste. Very few Americans there. I have to be back tomorrow. And how have you liked Florence? Well, I'll tell you one thing, ma'am. I've never seen so many statues in my life. <laughs> it doesn't sound as though you've had a very good time. Are you with someone here? Well, no, uh, no, I'm not. Why don't you join us? Yes, please do. Well, just don't stop playing, ma'am. Well, I won't. I'm determined to finish it. Some more wine, Johnny. Huh? Oh, yeah. Thanks a lot. Now, now where, where was I? Uh, you were describing a dream named Carlotta. Yeah, yeah, Carlotta. Well, uh, she wanted to come with me, see, but I said to myself, what's the use of bringing an Italian chick to Florence? It's like carrying coals to Newcastle. Well, now, I'm sorry I didn't. You can freeze to death in Newcastle. Carlotta, hmm? Yeah, here's, here's a picture of that guy. Boy, is she terrific. And this other snapshot, your sister? Oh, no, no, that's Susie. My girl in Cedar Falls. In Cedar Falls, Iowa. Oh. Yeah, I know just what you mean. Susie and Carlotta. Oh, everything's okay now, but what'll I do when I get out of the service? I'm nuts about them both, and it's, it's awful. Young man, you've been drinking. Yes, ma'am, I sure have. It's enough to drive a fella to drink. You, you know? simply can't be in love with two women at the same time, Johnny. Well, nobody else can, but I can. I, I, I promised Carlotta I'd take her back with me, but when I show up in Cedar Falls with her, what'll Susie say? Oh, cheer up, Corporal. You'd feel much worse if no one loved you. You don't get the point, Manina. Mm. He's serious. He wants to talk to someone so he can make up his mind, and we're making progress. Mm, definitely. Now... When you're out with Carlotta, are you really happy? Oh, like floating on a pink cloud. Mm -hmm. Th then I get a letter from Susie, and I wish I had a parachute. <laughs> You've just got to make your choice. Yeah, that's, that's just the trouble. Another step forward. Oh, oh my gosh. Look at the time. My train leaves in an hour, and I'm in a bad enough jam without being AWOL. Anyway, thanks for the drink, sir, and, and for talking to me. Even if you couldn't explain to me why a man can't love two women. Good night, man. Good night, Johnny. And Good ev luck. Everything's going to work itself out all right. Huh? Yeah, talking to you is sort of like being home again, talking to my dad. Thanks again. That boy worries me. Oh, I bet he worries Carlotta and Susie, too. No, no, I, I mean, he's pretty tight, isn't he? He'll never make that train. Go with him, David. See him off. And I'll get a taxi and go home. I'll be right along to you. Thanks. <laughs>
Good morning. Oh, good morning. What are you doing up so early? Well, I was sleeping like a lamb until I heard the gate scraping. Oh, I was pruning the roses. Here. Uh-huh. For you. <laughs> Thank you. Incidentally, you look perfectly beautiful even at this unholy hour. And you look like a man who could do with some black coffee. It's practically ready. I'm practically there. Oh, three o'clock. You always make coffee in your sleep. That's an old family tradition. Johnny, get off all right? Well, after considerable detouring, you should have been with us. Oh, there are times when a lady should go home and make coffee. Yeah, in the restaurant, I reminded him of his father. When I finally got him on the train, I reminded him of his mother. And his uh, problem? All straightened out? All he needed was a little advice, and all I need is a little sleep. But who won? Carlotta or Susie? Who do you think? I've no idea. Well, guess. Susie? Hands down. All he really loves is that farm in Iowa and home and all that goes with it. Susie? David, I want to ask you something. Uh, hmm? Please tell me the truth. Mm. Are you sure that you don't regret anything? When I saw you with that boy, I... I suddenly felt how much you must miss your own son and all the things you've given up. Are you sure you've made the right choice? Please tell me. I, I want to know, David. Did you hear me? I... Don't ever leave me. Please don't ever leave me. Act three of the Hollywood Radio Theater will continue in just a few moments. Make a friend and you make an ally. There's a thought for you to keep in mind, as many another American has. A group of people in Seattle, Washington, thought about it and did something about it. The owners of a large knitting mill there discovered that they had an overstock of yarns and pieces of material which they couldn't use. Well, day after day, they heard on their radios and read in the newspapers how badly Koreans needed warm clothing to survive the freezing winter. So they decided to do something about it. They got together with their employees and worked out a plan. Although the factory ordinarily closed at 4 p.m., the employees volunteered to work overtime without pay several evenings a week to make up the excess material and yarn into sweaters, especially small ones for children. The result? Within a short time, 150 sweaters plus other gifts from the workers at the mill were on their way via the Marine Air Force to be distributed to the Koreans who need them the most. Those Seattle folks have found great satisfaction in their unselfish work And they've discovered that by helping others, you help your country. We pause now for station identification. The curtain rises on Act Three of September Affair, starring Joan Fontaine as Manina Stewart and Joseph Cotton as David Lawrence. Two weeks have gone by. Far from Florence in New York, David's wife is meeting once again with her lawyer. Now, what about my trip, Charles? Do you approve? If you really want to go, Italy is very beautiful. Is the boy happy you're taking him with you? Oh, he'd be very cross if he heard you say that. He's taking me. Catherine, you're planning to see that Salvatini woman in Florence? Well, I... I might. That unanswered question still torments me. Why did David decide to come home? Well, perhaps she can give me the answer. Does your son know about her? Oh, yes. He's very much against my seeing her. He's right. Yes, he probably is. But don't worry, Charles. And thank you again for all your help. Hey! Where is everybody? We're in the kitchen, David. Well, take time out. I'm going to fix a drink. Well, then make an extra one. Maria's here. Oh, fine. Hello, Maria. Hello. I'm disappointed, Manina. He seems completely happy. He wasn't happy when he left here this morning. 
Where'd you go, David? The river. I ran into an old love of mine. And you brought her home, no doubt? No, no, she was a little too heavy to carry. There was a man at the river, a city engineer, and he was working on a turbine. My turbine. Imagine a turbine for my own factory. Made you quite homesick, huh? Not at all, Maria. I've spent enough years with turbines and factories. That should ruin your day. But I had a wonderful time. And I got to thinking, Nina, that river out there and the miles of barren land and the poverty and what could be done with turbines and dams the way they did in California and Tennessee. I thought you just said you spend enough There years. are times, you know, when I wish Manita had never met you. And there are times when anyway, I Anyway, wish... dear, the engineer's name is Portini. He's going to Rome for a couple of weeks, and when he gets back, we're going to talk about it. Now, if you'll excuse me, I want to order some technical books. Uh, oh, you can mail a letter for me, uh, Maria. Thank you. So you have a rival at last, Manina. Don Quixote fought windmills. I can fight turbines. You seem to forget. Don Quixote lost the battle. Oh, I am impressed, Manina. For the first time. Time you have played like an artist. <laughs> I just wanted to show you that I've been practicing. Maybe now you listen to me. You must go to New York. You must play your concert. Oh, Maria, please, not again. I've never been happy. Oh, women, what fools we are. We discover radium. We swim in the channel. We. Si? Vole dame? C'è for una signora. Signora Caterina Lawrence desidera di parlarvi. I knew this would happen. I knew. Mrs. Catherine Lawrence. I know that one day she'll come here and ask questions. Go through the other door. And the books, David's book, take them. No, but she doesn't know who I am. Go, I tell you. I want to see her. I'll be back in a moment. You incorrigible. Ve entrare, la signora. Si. Prego, signora. Uh, uh, Mrs. Salvatini? I am very happy to meet you, Mrs. Lawrence. Uh, forgive me. Uh, the young lady who just left... Uh, at first, I thought she was... She studies piano with me. We adopted each other many years ago. She's lovely. I'll bring the tea, Maria. You will join us. Oh, thank you. Uh, you must be wondering why I've come here. My, my son and I planned to visit the places my husband did before he died. Including this home, madame? Lemon or cream, Mrs. Lawrence? Oh, oh just lemon, please. And you... Probably wondering about your husband's generous check. Oh, please. My visit has nothing to do with that. But I... I couldn't leave Florence without talking to you. I, um... I saw a boy in the entrance hall, Mrs. Lawrence. Is he your son? Yes. Oh, won't he join us? I... I don't think so. We must leave in a moment. But I... I've already learned something just from meeting you. I'd imagined you quite differently. You mean younger? Well, my husband seemed to be searching for something. Another sort of life, perhaps. When I first heard your name, I... I thought he'd found it. Tell me, do you know why he'd suddenly decided to come back to America? I'm afraid I don't. If I could only be sure that he took that plane of his own accord, and not because of a letter I'd written to him, I... I wouldn't have this horrible feeling of... Of being responsible. Uh, Miss, says Lawrence. I have a wonderful son, a name I'm proud of, independence, everything except peace of mind. I wish I could give you the answer, but I can't. Well, thank you for your kindness. I'll see you to the door. No, no, please don't bother. Goodbye, Mrs. Lawrence. Goodbye, and forgive me for the interruption. In all my life, I never felt so ashamed. Liars and cheats, that's what we are. Oh, please, Maria, don't make it worse for me. For you. You want me to pity you because you had to spend a few embarrassing moments. I feel sorry for her. Why did she go back on her word? Now that she thinks David is dead, it's... Well, it's easy to be generous. Manina, this woman is his wife. She made him miserable and I'm making him happy. You really believe it? Yes, I do. We are happy. And nothing will ever part us. Now I do feel sorry for you. Oh. 
Mother, where are we going now? I told the driver to take us back to the hotel, dear. Mother, I... I think Father... Well, I think he's alive. David! Back there, I... I, I waited for you in the hall. A lady walked by with a tea tray. What are you trying to say? She's the same as the picture, Mother. Well, what picture? The picture that was in the newspaper after the plane crashed. This picture. I saved the clipping. I have it right here. Look at it. Manina Stewart. But I... I just met her. It explains the check, Mother. Father didn't give that money to Mrs. Salvatini. He needed it so he could live here. He's alive. Oh, thank God. Thank God. Wow, where have you been all this time? Maria. I missed you. Here are your books, David. They finally came. Oh, good. Now I really can get at those plans. David, You I... see, look, just as I thought. Now I know it can be done. We divert the river, blast through these hills here, and... Oh, darling, I'm sorry. When it comes to work, I'll... Look, how about having dinner at that little place in town again? Oh, I, I don't want to go into town, not tonight. Then how about dinner here on the terrace? Candles, moonlight, and mosquitoes. We can even... Oh, what is it, Manina? Maria, I've been at it again. David, I... Uh, I played the Rachmaninoff concerto for her. She wants me to go to New York. Do you want to go? No, but it's a great temptation. You gave up your work after you made a success, and I gave it up before. Well, that's right. I, I, I never thought of it that way. David promised me something that if, that if I ever make you unhappy, that, that you must leave me. I promise, because... That will never happen. Buonasera! Buonasera! Oh, Portini, I thought you were in Rome. Oh, I just arrived. Oh, I have a good news. Signor Portini. Oh, signora. Good news is exactly what we need. Well, yesterday I have a meeting with a representative of the European Recovery Program. He's much interested in your ideas. Oh? He wants to know when you can go to Rome. Well, who is he? Uh, what's his name? Uh, Signor Duncan. Uh, George Duncan. You know him? No. No, I don't, don't believe so. But before you go any further... Uh, yes? Well, I... I'm afraid I've been too optimistic, Portini. There, there are just too many difficulties. But when I mentioned the difficulties, you yourself told me they could all be overcome. All right, maybe they can, but uh, I don't want the job. I, I don't want to get that involved. But, Senor, all Mr. Duncan wants uh, is to I've had with experience you. with government jobs, headaches and red tape and, no, oh, very little money. It's not worth it. Bringing prosperity to this entire region is not worth it, I've senor? worked enough. I'm, I'm sorry, Portini. I am sorry, too. More than you will ever know. Senor? Senora? David, what is it? George Duncan. I, I've known him for years. He's even a member of the Bayshore Country Club. Mm. Couldn't you draw up the plans and let Portini carry them out? Well, that's impossible. It calls for a man with connections. He'd have to go to Washington. Oh, but there must a... be some way. No, no, there isn't. So please, let's not mention it again. And Oh, don't look like that, darling. It, <laughs> it doesn't mean a thing to me. Not a thing. Oh, uh, come in, please. Thank you. I'm Melina Stewart. I know. My mother isn't in. We're checking out of the hotel in a couple of hours. May I wait, please? If you want to. But if you came here to tell her that my father's alive, you're not telling us anything we don't know. Yes. That's why I came. It wasn't so hard to figure it out once we saw you. Your picture was in the papers. David, if your mother knows that he's alive, why are you leaving? I guess she just didn't see any point in staying. She's written a letter to him. I was just about to deliver it to Mrs. Salvatini. We're not sure that she'll forward it, but, but we... of course she would. And if you want me to, I'll give it to him. I believe you will. Uh, this is it, Miss Stewart. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to pack. David, I... I beg of you not to judge your father too quickly. Don't hate him. I always loved my father. But he died when the plane crashed in the ocean. I'll miss him for the rest of my life. No, don't say that. He's alive and he loves you. He speaks of you so often. My father is dead. Goodbye, Miss Stewart. (laughs) 
But Nina, what's the matter? What is it? What happened in town? I've seen your wife and your son, David. You... They know all about it. When did they get here? I met your wife yesterday at Maria's. Oh, it's amazing, isn't it, what excellent detectives' wives make without any previous experience? Why didn't you tell me last night? I was too upset. And she's gone now, David. But she wrote you a letter. Here. I'll read it to you. Maybe you should. It concerns you as much as it does me. Dear David, I've tried to feel hurt and angry and jealous. But my overwhelming happiness that you're alive erases all other thoughts. You are free, David. I'm returning home to go through with the divorce. Well, the walls have tumbled down and the prisoners are free. Yes, hmm? we're free. We can be alive again. What did you think of my son? He's quite a fellow, isn't he? He said that he loved you and that you'd been a wonderful father and that he missed you terribly. <laughs> I missed him more than anything. I can tell you that now. Well, you can go and play your concert, and I can go on to Washington. Phone Maria, darling. This calls for a real celebration. Yes. It's funny. When we first met, we were on our way to America. We're still on our way. Ladies and gentlemen... We'll be landing in New York in six minutes. You'll find your luggage in the customs office under the initial of your last name. Please fasten your seat belt. Excited, David? A little. Disappointed, too. Disappointed? Just occurred to me. I never saw Capri again. I was sound asleep when we flew over it. I saw it. It looked very lonely. David, hmm? that cable I got from the agent just before we left, after the concert in New York, I'll have to go straight to Philadelphia. Another recital? Yes. Well, Philadelphia isn't far away. You'll be a great success, darling. Will I? Thank you, David. I didn't mean to startle you, Catherine. David! But I still had my key, so I just walked in. I, I wanted to see you. I... I hoped you would. How is David? He's fine. He enrolled at Columbia yesterday. Huh. I'd like to see him before I leave. You're going away? Washington, a new project. Biggest thing I've ever tackled. Well, that's wonderful. Catherine, I don't, w don't want to tell you any lies, and I don't know yet what the truth is myself. But thank you for your letter and your understanding. Write to me, David. I will. And thank you for not asking me anything. Dad! Hello, David. It, it's so good to see you. Thanks. I, I wanted to go to the airport, but, well, I, I wasn't here when the cable arrived. Is it true? Are you really coming home? I don't know, David. I... I need time to find myself. I... Good back, way. See you soon, Dad. turn, driver. This is the International Airport. That's right, Mac. I told him to, David. But the plane for Philadelphia doesn't leave from here. I'm not going to well, well, where are you going? I've changed some plans, David. I'm going to Brazil, Rio de Janeiro. Brazil? Well, how long you, will you be gone? Two weeks? A, a month? I... Menina, how long? I'm not sure, but well, I... Why are you going? What? Well, what's happened to us? I wanted to go away before, but I wanted you to be the one to say goodbye to us. It would have been easier for you. Oh, I wouldn't. Oh, no, let me finish, David. We've tried to hide from the past. But our roots are there, yours and mine. And we can't help it. When I met Catherine and David, that was my goodbye. And when, when you read a letter and 
told me how much you missed him. That was yours. There's a great difference between seeing your son and being with him. Well, even if all you say is true, we, we, we love each other. A love built on deception. It had to end. Perhaps if you'd asked me, I'd stay. But we know it would be wrong. So don't ask me if you love me. If I love you. Passengers for Rio de Janeiro and Buenos Aires will please step to the reservation Goodbye, counter. Goodbye, David. Passengers for... You staying, Rio. mister? Or do you want to take the cab back? Wait here, please. I... No. I... I'll go back now. In a moment, our stars will return. The story is told about a couple of tourists who are going through an art gallery in Italy. One man, obviously tired of sightseeing, announced to everyone within hearing, Ah, you call this art? Nothing but faded paint and cracked canvas. We got better stuff on our calendars at home. An American serviceman overheard this and saw how it offended the Italians. He turned to the man and said, Sir, the paintings here are not on trial. The people who come to see them are. Well, the frowns of disapproval on the faces of the Italians were erased by smiles of understanding. And the incident was widely repeated. It was a small thing, but... Even small things can have tremendous results. Such acts by you and your friends today are shaping our world of tomorrow. Now, here's Mr. Cummings with our stars. We want to thank them for two beautiful performances, Joan Fontaine and Joseph Cotton. <laughs> Joan, I know you've just returned from Europe. Did you visit all those wonderful places in Italy? Well, only Venice this time. You know, Joe and I made September a fair in Italy, well, most of Oh, it would have been hard to duplicate that glorious Italian landscape. And... Weren't you making a picture this time, too, Joan? Yes, in Spain and in England. And, well, I had an apartment in Paris, too. Oh, Joan, any fashion tips for me to take home to my wife? Yes. This season, all fashionable women will have the slim silhouette look. Silhouette? You mean string bean. Well, there goes television. The string bean neckline will set it back 20 years. <laughs> and we're happy to congratulate such a lovely girl as you on your recent marriage and welcome you back to the States. <laughs> well, I had to come home, Irving. It was so much excitement going on. Yes, and we have an exciting new show for next week that you won't want to miss. It's a thrilling drama from Paramount Pictures. The search by an ex-serviceman for a mysterious girl he met during the war. You won't want to miss Captain Carey, USA. And starring in her original role will be lovely Wanda Hendricks. And as our co-star, that exciting new personality, Charlton Heston. Sounds great, Irving. Good night. Good night. Good night, and we'll be seeing you. Produced by Mr. Irving Cummings. Our orchestra is under the direction of Rudy Schrager. This is Ken Carpenter inviting you to join us next week at this same time for another presentation of the Hollywood Radio Theater. Hollywood Radio Theater is a presentation of the United States Armed Forces Radio Service.